next video. Today we're going to meet Dan and take a look at his uh, van that he's living in. And Dan, so how long have you been in your van? I've been in it, um, I guess about six years now. Wow, that's yes. a long yes. time. Yes. Yeah. I'm... It's home to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so you're retired? Yes. So your pension or social security, your um, outside your I'll get on? social security come this September. I'll be 62. So. And have you been working up till now? Um, no, I retired early. And so you living on savings is what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, that's a really good way to do it. I know quite a few, a few people who've done that. And just knew they had to get so far to social security and just made it happen. Yeah, that's who we're sweating out. Oh, we have nine months to go. <laughs> that's exactly what I did, and man, I remember just really <laughs> looking forward to getting that social security. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of a good, good milestone yeah. to look forward to. And it looks like you've got a really nice van. Have you been in this van the entire six years? Um, no, I had a, an Astro van before this. But basically, pretty much the same layout and the same van. So that's all. It's, it's I, I'm a very minimalist person. It just is very simple. It has everything that I need in there, and it's my home. Yeah, I'm very comfortable with it. And six years ago, why did you decide to live in a van? Um, well, I was looking for somewhere what to go, and I saw one of your videos, early videos um, from the Cheap RV Living, and I said, that will work for me. And I came out to uh, see the RTR the first time, and I actually was in Skatamash for like a couple of weeks before the RTR, and all these people descended <laughs> on us. I said, oh my God, and that's how I made friends also. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where it all led to. I've been here ever since. And so friendship was probably, um, were you a little concerned when you first started living in the van? Will you be able to make friends? Well, I wasn't concerned I could make friends, but where do I go? How do I meet people as far as that would go? So eventually it will happen. I'm, I'm originally from the New York area, so it's not easy. I, it's easy for me to just go up north to look for somebody. It's no right. big deal. Yeah, if you're from the New York area, you're not yeah. shy. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I can be a little reserved, but not shy. Right. Right. Well, that's good. Mm. That makes uh, that makes life richer and fuller mm -hmm. the more people you have mm -hmm. around you. Well, it's all about the people. That's what I have discovered over the course of the six years. It's all about the people that you meet. It is. It really is the community, mm -hmm. the the connections. Mm -hmm. When you when you first were thinking about going out and and living in your van, were you concerned about your safety? Um, really not. I really wasn't. Um, and part of it is because of the, the videos that I have watched from Cheap RV Living and yourself that, um, and I have done a lot of camping over the years, um, prior to getting the van. I, I go out camping any, anyway, so I really wasn't that concerned about it. And in the six years you've been doing it, have you ever had a situation where you were actually kind of concerned for your safety? Not once. Not once. Not one single time. Well, you know, a lot of people are worried there's roving bands of and gangs of rapists and murderers, mm -hmm. and you've run into a lot of them, haven't you? <laughs> well, when I used to live back in New York City, yeah. that, that's where you have to worry. Out here, I really, I have no concerns at all. Right. I really don't. It's the last thing on my mind. So really, it's you would say it's been very safe. Yeah, extremely safe. Right. Extremely. I, I, and I really want to communicate that to people yeah, because there's a lot of fear. Don't out there. worry about it at all. You, you'll be fine. And you'll, you'll make friends as you go along. And, and even if you're not good friends with them, it's kind of the community around you and where we're camping now. There's always somebody around pretty right. much. And you have uh, made, uh, you joined one of my caravans? Um, yes. Well, I kind of fell into the caravans. People that I knew were kind of going in and out of the caravans, mm -hmm. and that's, and now I pretty much travel with one of the caravan groups, Brian's caravan group. So the, it really, it's a the, one of the very first caravans we started. Mm -hmm. It's a splinter group that has stayed together ever since then. Yeah, and that's the sense of community, right? As far as that goes, and that's just what I've always had in mind with the RTR and the caravans that you meet each other, you make that. That bond mm -hmm. and uh, you go off. Yeah, that's what it's all about. And I'm sure that uh, probably in the summer you kind of travel alone more. Uh, yes, I call Most this I call it social season here in the winter time. Right, where everybody comes down to Arizona, um, and you get to see everybody. And then it gets to be March or April, you get to go off, and everybody goes off in their own direction. Right, that's, that's good too because at that time you want to go off to yourself. You've had enough. Right. 
it's it's that beautiful blend of uh, of community and and being together, and yet an individual and off doing what's yes. good for you. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, do you go home a lot to New York? or um, No, I haven't been there in a couple of years. I basically stayed out west the past two years. I used to go back every season, but now I don't bother to do it anymore. It's my home out here. Mm -hmm. I need the open space. I, yeah. The, what, the best thing to me about being a snowbird is that every fall, I, I love the idea of going to the desert, but every spring I'm really happy about leaving the desert. Exactly. Yes. Get back into the mountains. Yes. Yeah. So you get that choice. That and that's choice. what it's all about. You have choices. And if you're not happy where you are, I just get in the van and I go off right. somewhere else. Right. Very, very I'm good. not, you know, and I've never been uncomfortable with a campsite. When I'm not comfortable there, I'll just go off to a different place, you right. know, further on down the road a little bit. Right. Exactly. Well, would you mind if we took a uh, no, look right. around in your van? It's, it's very simple. I'm a real true minimalist. Oh, okay, good. As far as that goes. <laughs> so it'll be a really long tour, but we'll try and make it short for the <laughs> folks at home. It'll be about 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. But you've done a really good job. Thank you. It really is very pleasant, yeah, it's, very comfortable. And that's compliments to you because most of it came from videos that I had watched on Cheap RV Living and how do I, how do I go about doing this? Right. I was opposed of getting an RV. I didn't want to have anything that big, and I wanted to be able to go off in the desert on just, you know, and this is perfect. And also the gas mileage. You it's, know, you can yeah. afford to drive this around. Yeah, yeah. I get about yeah. 15, 16 miles per gallon, which, which is, is affordable. Yeah, it's but, affordable. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's mm -hmm. take a look. Okay, very good. So, of course, there's not a whole lot of room in any van, but uh, it seems like you've made really good use out of the room you have. I tried to. I wanted to have some openness. I didn't want to feel very claustrophobic in here, so I can walk yeah. around. I can stand in it yeah. as far as just, that goes. I have to bow my head a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit, but it has a nice little high top on. So. Right. And so you built your, basically you've got I, a I bed. Myself, I have a bed. It was a futon that I cut down. Um, I keep storage underneath for all my clothes and bins. That's where my house battery goes for the solar. And how did you make these legs? It's just angle iron, aluminum right. angle iron. And you just bolted it on? E it just bolted them on carriage bolts. Right. Strong and It's very and light. strong and it's light. Um, and I have 125 watts of solar, which basically runs my lights in my fridge. And that's about it. And you got a nice uh, cook area, cooktop uh, cook, area. Cooktop yeah. area, a little bit of counter. Keeps all kind of my storage down here. It's basically pots and pans and food. And up top I have the smaller cabinets that originally came with it. Gives me more storage up there. Right. And it just, it works for me. Right. It really is. I'm very comfortable in it. Right. And so... It'd be fair to say you're kind of a minimalist. Yes, extremely. Um, you don't need a lot of stuff. No, you don't. Right, and you don't have a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't have a lot of stuff, and I don't need a lot of stuff. I right. don't want a lot of stuff. That's why I kind of went this route, because right. more space will just give you more stuff to collect and junk. Right. That you do not need. Right. A little, uh, little butane stove to cook with. A water bottle. Very simple, a little 12-volt fridge. Um, the solar controller and an inverter is back there, and I have the house battery underneath the bed also, mm -hmm. um, which is, it's, uh, for six years, it's been perfect for me. Mr. Buddy Heater. Yeah, Mr. Warm. Buddy Heater. Yep. Extra blankets, because we've had some yeah. cool nights. It, gets, it was cold yeah. last night. It was about 36, 37, it, but before the sun went up. Yeah, so what? real cool nights. Yeah. I mean, it's taken me all across America. Yeah. And uh, this looks like uh, something you just went down to Home Depot. And... This was a standard Home Depot cabinet. I just stained it. It's a utility cabinet for a like a utility room, a laundry room. Mm -hmm. um, just had to cut the back out of it for the wheel well to fit in there. But that's uh, very simple. So building this was nothing. It was, it was really nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I am not a mechanically inclined. I was not a carpenter or, or a tradesman of any kind. So um, just really simple tools. Right. 
Uh, do you mind, how uh, difficult was it to find the van? That's becoming more and more of a job. It was, well, I wouldn't say it was difficult, but you have to look for a while. Um, it probably took me a couple of months until I found the right exact van that I wanted. And uh, so this is a Ford. What year is it? It's a 2001. Um, it's a StarCraft conversion van originally. Mm -hmm. And it had the high top on it, which gives me a little bit more room um, and some additional storage up top mm -hmm. built into it. And um, you know, I, I looked around for a couple of months. I saw the ad. And I saw it. it. Was in very good shape. Was very well maintained. And uh, I just said, "Let's go." Yeah, got to pull the trigger. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Anymore, they're getting even these, especially high tops, are getting harder yeah. and harder to find. Well, it's, it's very hard to find, and the price of new vans is out of, out of this world. Yeah, you're talking forty, fifty thousand dollars for you a are. brand new van. Yeah, and they're not dickering much with yeah. you either. Not at all. Uh, this is probably worth quite a bit more now than what you paid for it. Eh, I would guess probably about the same about price. The same. About the same. After with the, if I can find someone that you know wants to live in a van, right? Um, and if not, they can just tear everything out of it. They're fine, right? As far as that goes. Yeah. Well, this is really a sweet setup. Uh, everything you need. Yeah, it is. It's home. Well, now there's one thing, and this is something yeah. I always have to ask, mm -hmm. or people get mad at me. How do you go to the bathroom? In a bucket. In a bucket. In a bucket. Okay. And I'm very comfortable with that. It's. I don't have any tanks. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to right. go dump. I don't have to do any of that. Right. I just, you know, I get rid of my trash. It goes out with the trash. Yeah, me too. And people com complain about that. And I yeah. say, have you ever had a baby? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> have you ever owned a dog two, that you took for a walk? The questions that I get is basically about asphyxiation because of the heat. Right. From my buddy heater and excretion. Well, how do you go to the van? It's, it's, it's simple. Yeah. How do you, how does anybody else go to, you know, go to the van? Right, right. You just, it's natural. It's, yeah, pretty easy to do. <laughs> uh, and how about shower? You don't have a shower. I don't have a shower. I do have a Planet Fitness mess, uh, membership that mm -hmm. I use. Um, and there's plenty of showers you can find. I mean, where we are now, I could probably go to three or four locations within 15 or 20 minutes. And I have a handheld little Sayuki um, pump shower that I can stick down in my water bottle and has pressurized. And I can do it. I right. put a tarp over the doors and I can shower out in the desert. Right. You just uh, sponge bathe in between. Sponge baths and baby wipes. Right. Keeps you in between showers. Yeah, it's fine. That's all you need. That's it. Yep. You cook. You have your stove, yeah, so you I cook. cook. I, have, I cook all my meals in here. I don't really don't go out to many restaurants. I'm very comfortable with it. And you learn how to cook this way. You do. Especially for myself, just one person. Right. It's kind of a bachelor cooking. Yeah, that's what I do. That's what it is. I, that's what I'd be doing at home. Yeah. You know, when I when I lived in the city, I, was, I would go out to restaurants constantly. I just ate all my meals out. And I just, I eat better now because I eat much healthier living on a, on a simple lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, so. It's it's at least possible to eat eat yes. as well or better. Yeah. And I have to say thank you to you for all the efforts that you have done over the time because I would have never found this lifestyle. And I was searching for something. What, what am I going to do now? Where do I go? How do I travel as far as that goes? And it just, it all worked for me. Good. I'm, I love hearing that. Yeah. I mean, I... I'm not ashamed to say I love to hear that. Yeah, and you, you are due the credit for it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. And your fridge helps eating a lot better, yeah, too. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It, it's small, but it's, you know, I can get by. I probably put for my refrigerated food, I can have a, a week's worth of food. You know, simple eggs, but, you know, butter. Right. A little bit of meats. Right. No big deal. Right. Easy. Yeah. Simple, easy. You know, it's all about getting out in the outdoors and exploring, and that's where your concentration should be, not about maintaining what you got to do and, and fixing everything up. Right. Yeah, you, your your house is tiny, but your backyard is enormous. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's a, I've heard this expression before. I don't live in the van. I live out of my van right. is really what it is. Very much so. Yeah, very much, very, very much so. Well, Dan, thank you so much for sharing your home and your life with us. It's uh, it's great. It's simple, but it's it is great, complete, it is wonderful. And I must again say thank you to you because you have really given us the roadmap on how to live this type of lifestyle and free yourself from the, the modern world. Should I say? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad it's working so well for you. Thank All you. Right.
Thank you. So, folks, I hope you got something out of this. I know you did. I know I've been inspired, and I hope you are. If you are, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later.